Barks and yelps filled the air. It wasn't a dog park, but the Bone and Brew, the only bar in town where dogs could drink beer and forget their woes. At a table by the window sat two unusual canines. First there was Winston, a portly pug with a perpetually furrowed brow. He looked like he'd lost his favorite chew toy and suspected the mailman. Opposite him sat Luna, a lanky greyhound with legs that went on for days, and a gaze that seemed to pierce the very fabric of existence. Man, this world... Winston, nursing a bowl of Barkweiser, let out a heavy sigh. Don't tell me, Winston. You lost your ball under the couch again? Winston shot Luna a withering look. It's more than that. It's just life, you know? The bar, with its dimly lit lamps shaped like fire hydrants and walls adorned with framed portraits of famous canines, seemed to amplify his words. A gruff bulldog wearing a leather vest lumbered past, accidentally bumping into their table. Watch it, fuzzball. He growled at Winston, then lumbered on without waiting for a response. See what I mean? Nobody understands. Winston whined, taking a large gulp of his beer. Maybe you haven't found the right dog to talk to. Easy for you to say. You're a greyhound. You guys are practically royalty. He gestured with his paw towards a group of greyhounds at the bar, their sleek coats gleaming under the dim lights. All grace and speed. Me, I'm built for comfort, not speed. More likely to trip over my own feet than win any races. Luna chuckled, a melodic sound that turned heads at nearby tables. Don't underestimate yourself, Winston. We all have our strengths. Yeah, well, yours are more obvious. He took another swig of his beer, then looked at Luna over the rim of the bowl. So what's your story then? Perfect life, perfect pedigree, perfect everything? Luna's smile faded slightly. Perfect? Hardly. Oh, here we go. Everyone's got problems, right? It's like every day is a new episode of the same old show. He let out a dramatic sigh, the kind that seemed to carry the weight of the world. My days are spent chasing squirrels that always get away, no matter how fast I run or how high I jump. Begging for scraps even though my bowl is full because somehow the food on the table always looks better. And trying to avoid the mailman who seems to have a personal vendetta against me. He took another gulp of beer, savoring the momentary escape it provided. It's exhausting, I tell you. Every single day feels like a marathon with no finish line in sight. Luna leaned forward, her gaze intense, as if she was about to reveal a profound truth. Try running until your lungs burn, until every muscle in your body screams for you to stop, only to chase after a mechanical rabbit that you'll never catch. It's like a cruel joke. Winston blinked, trying to process the weight of Luna's words. Well, that sounds... symbolic. It's the daily grind. We all have our own mechanical rabbits, don't we? We chase, we strive, we push ourselves to the limit. But do we ever truly catch what we're after? Or is it all just an endless pursuit? The two dogs looked contemplative, their beers half empty, as if the weight of their conversation had drained them. The bar was filled with other dogs, each lost in their own world, perhaps pondering their own mechanical rabbits. Whoa, deep, Luna, deep. You've really got me thinking now. He scratched behind his ear with his paw, a thoughtful gesture that seemed to mirror his inner contemplation. Maybe you understand more than I thought. Maybe we're all just trying to make sense of this crazy world, one day at a time. And in that moment, they shared a silent understanding, a bond forged through shared struggles and the relentless pursuit of their own mechanical rabbits. As they left the bar together, there was a sense of camaraderie, a feeling that maybe, just maybe, they weren't alone in their daily grind. And as the sun set over the park, they walked into the horizon, ready to face another day, Another chase, but this time with a little more understanding and a lot more heart. Relationships are rough, Winston blurted out, breaking the momentary silence. He had been sitting quietly, lost in his thoughts, but the weight of his emotions finally spilled over. He was on his second bowl of Barkweiser now, and the alcohol was starting to loosen his tongue. There's this poodle, Daisy, he began, his voice tinged with a mix of excitement and melancholy. She's got eyes like golden honey and a bark that could melt butter. Every time I see her, my heart races like I'm chasing a squirrel. Luna raised an eyebrow, intrigued by Winston's sudden outpouring of feelings. Sounds serious, she remarked, her tone a mix of curiosity and concern. We went for a walk in the park, Winston continued, his tail drooping slightly. The memory seemed to weigh heavily on him. She sniffed my butt. I sniffed hers. It was magical, he exclaimed, a brief smile lighting up his face. It was like we were meant to be, like two puzzle pieces fitting perfectly together. He let out a whine, 
the sound filled with longing and regret. But then her owner put her on a leash and dragged her away before I could even ask her to share a fire hydrant. He sighed dramatically, the weight of missed opportunities evident in his voice. The one that got away, he murmured, his eyes reflecting a deep sense of loss. Luna chuckled, her tail thumping gently against the floor. She had seen Winston go through many phases, but this one seemed to hit him the hardest. Don't lose hope, Winston, she said softly, her eyes filled with empathy. Sometimes, love finds us when we least expect it. Love is like a flea, annoying at times, but you never know where it might pop up next. And when it does, it can be the most wonderful thing in the world, she added with a playful grin. Winston looked thoughtful, his eyes gazing into the distance. Maybe you're right, Luna. Maybe I just need to be patient and keep my heart open. He wagged his tail, a newfound determination in his eyes. After all, every dog has its day, right? Luna nodded, her tail wagging in agreement. Exactly, Winston. And who knows? Maybe Daisy will come back to the park one day and you'll get another chance to share that fire hydrant. Winston's eyes brightened at the thought. Yeah, maybe she will. And when she does, I'll be ready. The two friends sat in comfortable silence, the bond between them growing stronger with each shared moment. In the end, it wasn't just about finding love, but also about cherishing the friendships that made the journey worthwhile. Winston let out a low whine. It's not just Daisy, it's everything. The constant pressure to fetch, to sit, to stay. It's enough to make a dog go mad. He shook his head, his jowls flapping. Sometimes I just want to dig a hole, bury myself and forget the world even exists. Luna nodded sympathetically. The fleas of doubt and the ticks of anxiety. We all carry them, Winston. The trick is not to let them burrow too deep. She took a sip of her paparita. Remember that time you chased your tail for a whole afternoon? You thought you were chasing something important, something life-changing. Winston looked sheepish. It felt pretty important at the time. Exactly, Luna said, her tail giving a knowing thump. We all chase our tails sometimes, metaphorically speaking. We compare ourselves to others, envy their speed, their pedigree, their shiny coats. Like that Afghan hound over there, Winston said, subtly pointing with his nose at a majestic creature with fur that flowed like a waterfall. Luna followed his gaze. He might look impressive, but have you ever seen him try to fit into a small car? Trust me, it's not pretty. Winston barked a laugh, the sound echoing through the bar. I guess you're right. We all have our own struggles. As the night wore on, the two dogs continued to share their woes, their laughter echoing through the bar. The dim lighting and the soft hum of chatter around them created a cozy atmosphere perfect for their heart-to-heart. -heart. Winston described his ongoing feud with the mailman, a wiry fellow with a penchant for whistling annoyingly cheerful tunes. Every morning, like clockwork, the mailman would arrive and Winston would be there ready to defend his territory. The mailman, oblivious to Winston's disdain, would simply smile and continue his route, whistling away. Luna, in turn, confessed her secret shame, an embarrassing inability to catch frisbees. She recounted the numerous times she had tried only to miss spectacularly, much to the amusement of the neighborhood kids. Despite her best efforts, the frisbee always seemed to elude her grasp, leaving her feeling a bit self-conscious. With each shared story, each sympathetic ear lent, their bowls slowly emptied. The bartender, a grizzled old terrier, would occasionally come by to refill their bowls, offering a knowing nod and a word of encouragement. The stories flowed as freely as the drinks, each tale bringing them closer together. The weight of the world, which had seemed so heavy just hours ago, felt a little lighter now, a little easier to bear. The camaraderie and understanding they found in each other provided a much-needed respite from their daily struggles. It was a reminder that even in the toughest of times, a good friend could make all the difference. You know, Winston said, wiping his mouth with his paw after finishing his third bowl of Barkweiser, for a dog who looks like she's constantly contemplating the meaning of life, you're not bad company, Luna. He chuckled, the sound deep and warm, resonating with genuine affection. Luna chuckled, her eyes twinkling with amusement. She had always been the introspective type, often lost in her thoughts, but tonight was different. Tonight she felt seen and understood, and it was a refreshing change. And for a pug who seems perpetually convinced the world is ending, you tell a good joke, Winston. Luna's voice was light, teasing, but there was an underlying sincerity. She appreciated Winston's ability to find humor even in the direst of situations, and it was a trait she admired deeply. 
As the night drew to a close, the two friends sat in comfortable silence, gazing at the moon through the bar's window. The world outside might still be full of challenges, but in that moment, they had each other, and that was enough. The bond they had forged over shared stories and empty bowls was a testament to the power of friendship, and it was a night they would both cherish for a long time to come. With a final nod to the bartender, they left the bar, walking side by side into the cool night air. Their steps were lighter, their hearts fuller, and as they made their way home, they knew that whatever the future held, they would face it together. The night had started with wagging tails and empty bowls, but it ended with a friendship that would stand the test of time.